A Doppler radar is sort of like a normal radar with some extra flavour added to it that makes it a bit more useful and also a bit more interesting to talk about in a video. A standard radar is essentially a combination of a radio transmitter and a radio receiver. And what it does is it sends out pulses of radio waves that then get reflected by objects such as aircraft or you know whatever we might be looking for and those will then be picked up by the receiver of the radar and by timing how long it takes for a radio pulse to get sent out and then return back to the receiver it can work out how far away the object is because of course if you know the speed of light uh, and you know how long it takes for the radio signal to travel well then you can work out the distance so essentially a radar is a distance measurement device it's it's a range finder but then of course the radar is mounted on a, a rotating assembly of some kind which means that we also have direction information we know where the antenna was pointing when we detected the object and so we can also work out in which direction the object is and by combining the direction and the distance well we then know where the object is and that's how a radar can detect stuff now a Doppler radar works the same way but it captures some extra information that makes it a bit more useful because a Doppler radar is also able to determine the speed at which something is coming towards us or moving away from us. It uses the so-called Doppler effect. The Doppler effect means that waves that are being transmitted from a moving object will be compressed in the direction that the object is moving in and will be stretched out in the direction that the object is coming from. And now these waves could be radio waves being sent out from the object, but they could also be sound waves, for instance, which is also why you've probably experienced the Doppler effect yourself. When there is some vehicle moving towards you at speed that's producing a lot of sound, like, let's say, a police car with the sirens on, the pitch of that sound will be higher than when the vehicle is driving away from you. So when the police car is coming towards you, the pitch will be high, then it goes past you and it drives away, and you'll hear that the pitch suddenly drops. And that's because first you're in that zone where the waves are being compressed, and therefore the zone where the frequency is higher, higher pitch noise, and then as it moves away from you, you'll be in the zone where the waves are stretched out a bit, and therefore the pitch will be lower, the frequency will be lower. And uh, you can use this effect to actually calculate the speed of the object. So if you knew the original frequency of that siren and you had a microphone that could detect the frequency at which you heard it, then you would be able to actually work out the speed of that police car when it's coming towards you or going away from you. And this effect is also used by the Doppler radar. So the Doppler radar is essentially a normal radar. It sends out pulses of radio waves and it detects these pulses returning to the radar and it still uses the difference in time to determine the distance to the object, just like a normal radar. But then it also looks at the frequency of that radio pulse that is coming back to the radar. And it looks at the frequency on, and based on how that frequency is different from the original frequency that it sent out, it knows if the object is moving towards us or away from us. And it also knows at what speed the object is coming towards us or away from us. Now there is a load of different reasons why this bit of extra information is useful, but there is one particularly good reason why, which is that it allows us to distinguish things that we are looking for from things that we are not looking for. You might use radar and you're looking for something that's surrounded by other objects and that makes it very hard to find a thing that you're looking for. However, the Doppler radar gives us an extra bit of information that we can use to distinguish between what we want and what we don't want. So for example, with this plane that is flying in some kind of storm, there is one big difference between the storm and the plane which is that the plane is moving, most likely, at a much higher velocity than the storm relative to the position of our radar setup. So what we can do is we can configure our Doppler radar to ignore anything below a certain speed. 
because it can detect speed natively, remember? You can then use speed to distinguish between different kinds of things, uh, which is a huge, huge bonus. Now, of course, clever people amongst you might have noticed that it doesn't always work, because if the plane is moving perpendicular to the radar, so at 90 degrees, so it's just flying by, it's not coming towards you, it's not going away from you, then the Doppler effect won't work. But then, of course, that doesn't mean that we can't detect the object, because at the same time, the Doppler radar is still a radar, and it also just detects objects that aren't moving, at least as long as you haven't configured the radar to ignore stationary or slow-moving objects. Anyway, uh, that's the basics of a Doppler radar setup. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.